Do you really think you know the story of the Twelve Apostles of Jesus? Simple men turned into legends whose journeys challenge everything we know about sacrifice and faith. Imagine leaving everything behind, facing the unimaginable, and still being marked for eternity, not by how they lived, but by how they died. Yes, the stories we were told hide controversies, counterintuitive truths, and I'm here to unveil the unexpected. These were not ordinary deaths. They were testimonies of extreme loyalty, challenging our understanding of cruelty and devotion. You are about to discover secrets that history and perhaps your faith have tried to forget. In this video, we unravel mysteries, confront controversies, and explore narratives that will make your skin crawl. And I promise, the truth behind the Apostles' fate will surprise you in minutes. Stay with us, subscribe now, and prepare for a journey where faith and fact intertwine in ways you never imagined possible. Your view on courage, sacrifice, and the true meaning of answering a call will never be the same again. John, the beloved apostle, is a central and mysterious figure in the biblical narratives. Son of Zebedee and Salome, and brother of James, also an apostle, his story is marked by a unique closeness with Jesus, often described as the disciple whom Jesus loved. This special relationship provided John with a unique perspective on Jesus' events and teachings. Known for his spiritual sensitivity and deep understanding, John was of utmost importance in conveying Jesus' teachings. He was present at crucial moments, such as the Transfiguration and the Last Supper, where he leaned beside the Master. After Jesus' death, John played a crucial role in the early Christian community in Jerusalem, witnessed Christ's ascension, and was a vital link among the apostles. However, John's fate is shrouded in mystery and symbolism. He suffered various persecutions, mainly directed by Emperor Domitian, for preaching the gospel in Ephesus. According to tradition, John was captured, tortured, and then thrown into a cauldron of boiling oil. However, God miraculously preserved his life, and he suffered no harm. Faced with the miracle, the emperor decreed he be exiled to the island of Patmos, which served as a prison of the empire. It's important to note that there is no biblical verse that can confirm or be used as a reference to assert that John was thrown into hot oil before being taken to the island of Patmos. What we have in this case is just the tradition of the so-called Church Fathers asserting this, nothing more. The Church Fathers, in reality, were zealous men who built the theology still used by the Church today, Many accounts and details about the Apostles' deaths were described by the Church Fathers and Christian doctrine. Next, John would have been exiled to the island of Patmos, where he received apocalyptic visions that make up and are recorded in the Book of Revelation in the Bible. These revelations highlight his spiritual closeness and reveal deep teachings about the future. As for his death, Christian tradition reports that John, despite several attempts at execution by Roman authorities, would have died of natural causes, according to Bishop Polycrates of Ephesus, attested by Eusebius of Caesarea in his ecclesiastical history. The Apostle John died in Ephesus in Asia Minor in the year 100 AD at about 94 years of age. However, it is said that the tomb was empty when it was opened by Constantine, in the maturity of his years, John, enveloped in the wisdom gained through decades of reflection and service, became a pillar in the Christian community. His words, filled with spiritual depth, guided, corrected, and encouraged the faithful. His teachings, imbued with the experience of living alongside Christ, resonated with authority and love, strengthening the roots of the nascent faith. The beloved apostle in his final days reflected on the tapestry of history he had witnessed from the humble beginnings on the shores of the sea of galilee to the complex plots in ephesus where the church struggled to maintain its identity amidst a world often hostile
In every word he wrote, in every piece of advice he gave, John emphasized the heart of the gospel, God's unconditional love manifested in Jesus Christ. He constantly reminded the community of the importance of remaining faithful to the truth, while exhorting love and unity, echoing Jesus' own request for his followers to be one, as in John 17, 21. In the visions recorded in Revelation, John offered the church a perspective of hope and triumph, even amidst persecutions and tribulations, pointing to the final victory of the Lamb Jesus over all forces of evil. These visions, full of symbolism, served as a source of comfort for Christians throughout the centuries, reminding them that, no matter how great the adversity, the final triumph belongs to God. John, in the twilight of his life, left an immeasurable legacy, not just as one of the founding apostles of the church, but as an example of faith, love, and perseverance. Through his writings and the life he lived, he continues to inspire countless generations, always pointing to the redeeming and transformative love of Jesus Christ. Brother James, known as James, the son of Zebedee, was present at the Transfiguration, the resurrection of Jairus' daughter, and the anguished agony of Jesus in Gethsemane. His close relationship with John and with Christ himself highlights his prominent position among the apostles. His significance in the Bible is evidenced by being part of the inner circle of the three apostles closest to Jesus, along with Peter and John. These three witnessed exclusive miracles and teachings, revealing the special trust Jesus placed in them. However, after the death of Jesus, James' trajectory took a dramatic turn. In the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, it is recorded that Herod Agrippa I of Judea, seeking to please the Jews, ordered James's execution. King Herod laid hands on some from the church to harm them and killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. The narrative does not provide detailed specifics about the exact method of execution, but tradition suggests that James was beheaded or pierced by a sword. It's important to note that there are two apostles named James in the scriptures, James, the son of Zebedee, whom we already know, and James, the son of Alphaeus, also known as James the Lesser. His active participation in the Gospels is relatively discreet and less evident compared to other apostles. After the death of Jesus, information about the activities of James, the son of Alphaeus, becomes even more scarce. Christian tradition, however, suggests that he also played a role in the expansion of the Gospel, possibly carrying out missionary activities. Regarding the death of James, the lack of specific details in the scriptures and the diversity of traditions make the narrative around the death of James the less a point of uncertainty. However, most of Christian doctrine believes that the son of Alphaeus also died by order of King Herod Agrippa I in Jerusalem, being beheaded in public. The image of James being beheaded is often found in paintings, sculptures and other religious objects. Yet other sources, such as a first century AD book called The Martyrdom of the Apostles, claim that James was thrown from the pinnacle of the temple in Jerusalem and then stoned to death. In first century Jerusalem, the news of James's death, one of the pillars of the early church, resonated intensely through the alleys and markets. His martyrdom was not just a blow to the hearts of Jesus's followers, but also a clear sign of the growing tension between the young church and the Jewish and Roman authorities. The death of James marked a defining moment, a turning point that reaffirmed the seriousness and cost of the Christian mission in the community of believers. The loss of James provoked a mix of mourning and determination. Peter and the other apostles, now more aware of the imminent danger, strengthened themselves in faith and resolved to continue the mission that Jesus had entrusted to them. The death of James served as a painful but powerful reminder that the journey undertaken would require extreme sacrifices. Yet, 
James's death was not in vain. It inspired a new wave of evangelization and testimony among Christians. The church, though persecuted, began to expand beyond the borders of Jerusalem and Judea, reaching Samaria and eventually the ends of the Roman Empire. The gospel message, nurtured by the blood of the martyrs, found fertile ground in hearts thirsty for hope and truth. Meanwhile, James the Less continued his discreet but vital ministry. Although the scriptures provide few details about his later acts, church tradition suggests that he also played a significant role in spreading the faith. His silent dedication and persistent contribution aided the growth and strengthening of the Christian community in a period of uncertainties and challenges. The story of the two Jameses, each with their own path and destiny, became a source of inspiration for later generations of Christians. They represent the diversity of callings within the church, one to a public role and a dramatic end, the other to a more silent contribution, but no less significant. Reflecting on the lives of the Apostles James, son of Zebedee, and James the Less, we are reminded that the path of discipleship can take many forms. Each, in their own way, embrace the call to follow Christ, whether in the public square, facing the executioner's sword, or in the discreet but essential shadows of faithful service. Their stories continue to resonate in the church's memory, reminding all believers that, regardless of the path we follow, we are called to live and bear witness to our faith with courage, love, and unwavering fidelity. Peter, originally known as Simon, was born in Bethsaida in Galilee. He was a fisherman by profession when he was called by Jesus to become a fisher of men. His name, formerly Simon, was later changed to Peter, which means rock or stone, symbolizing the solidity of faith he would demonstrate throughout the Gospels. Peter is portrayed as a fervent disciple, often impulsive but deeply devoted to Jesus. He witnessed miracles such as walking on water and was the first to recognize Jesus as the Christ, the Son of the living God, Peter played a central role at the Last Supper and was appointed as the leader of the Apostles. His denial of Jesus during the arrest is a poignant episode, followed by deep remorse and restoration by Christ after the resurrection. After Jesus' death, Peter traveled across the vast territory of the Roman Empire to spread the Gospel message, eventually establishing his residence in Rome, where he took the lead of the Christian community. His role is evidenced in the Acts of the Apostles, where he plays a crucial role in the expansion of the Gospel, especially among the Gentiles. In the year 64 AD, the city of Rome was consumed by a great fire, triggering a series of events. Emperor Nero blamed the followers of Christianity for the fire, initiating a relentless persecution against them. Peter was eventually arrested and condemned to death. Tradition recounts that Peter requested to be crucified upside down out of humility, claiming he was not worthy to die in the same manner as his master. The chosen place for his crucifixion was the Vatican Hill, where today stands the majestic St. Peter's Basilica, making him one of the first martyrs of Christianity and significantly contributing to the spread of the gospel around the world. His death is considered a valiant and final testimony of his unwavering faith in Jesus Christ. The story tells that, during this persecution, many Christians were subjected to horrendous tortures and executions, but the community's faith remained firm, often strengthened by the example of courage and sacrifice of leaders like Peter. As the flames of persecution burned, the faith of Christians spread with even more vigor, an unquenchable flame that defied oppression and death. Peter's decision to be crucified upside down, as tradition narrates, was not just an act of humility, but also a powerful testimony of his devotion to Christ. This choice reflects the profound transformation that occurred in Peter's life since that first encounter on the shores of the Sea of Galilee.
The impulsive fisherman had become the pillar of the church, a leader whose faith and conviction guided countless others on the path with Christ. His death was not the end, but a new beginning. Peter's story, with its mistakes and triumphs, has become a source of inspiration and encouragement for all Christians. His journey, marked by denial and restoration, by courage and sacrifice, resonates through the centuries, reminding us that God's grace and love are sufficient to transform and strengthen even the most fragile heart. Emperor Nero is also reportedly responsible for the death of the apostle Jude Thaddeus, also known as Labeus Thaddeus, or Judas, the son of James. Although one of the least mentioned apostles in the Bible, his contribution and legacies are significant. At the Last Supper, Jude Thaddeus questioned the meaning of Jesus' words, showing a genuine desire to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. After Jesus' death, he continued to play an essential role in spreading the gospel, particularly in the regions of Mesopotamia and Persia. His importance in the Bible is evident in his epistles, where he is recognized as the author of a brief and powerful letter addressed to Christians. In this epistle, he exhorts believers to remain steadfast in faith and the practice of brotherly love. As for Thaddeus' death, Christian tradition differs in details. One narrative suggests he was martyred alongside Simon by stoning, while other sources indicate that Jude Thaddeus was slain with an axe, a brutal form of execution at that time. Regardless of the specific details, his death is often considered a testimony of his dedication and fidelity to Christ. Jude is venerated as one of the patron saints of lost causes and desperate situations, symbolizing hope that persists even in the most difficult circumstances. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, although often in the shadow of more prominent apostles, shared a special closeness with Jesus from the beginning of his journey as a disciple. Andrew is frequently associated with crucial moments in the Gospels, like the multiplication of the loaves and fishes, where he introduced a young boy with five loaves and two fishes, becoming an instrument in the manifestation of divine power. His importance in the Bible is also evident in the list of the Twelve Apostles, where he is consistently mentioned among the first. After the death of Jesus, the spread of early Christianity continued. His missionary journey took him to various regions, including Scotland and Greece, where he is traditionally considered the founder of the Church of Constantinople. As for the death of Andrew, Christian tradition suggests he faced martyrdom by crucifixion in Patras, Greece. Before being crucified, Andrew is said to have undergone a long session of torture, being brutally whipped. However, his crucifixion has a unique peculiarity. He was nailed to an X-shaped cross, which later became known as St. Andrew's Cross. It is believed that Andrew, like Peter, requested to be crucified in this manner, as he believed he was unworthy to die in the same way as Jesus. The remains of Andrew were found centuries later and taken to Scotland by sea, where it is said the boat shipwrecked. This contributed to the veneration of St. Andrew as the patron saint of Scotland. The Apostle Philip, originating from Bethsaida, the same town as Peter and Andrew, was called by Jesus to follow him. His specific identification in the Gospels often referred to as Philip of Bethsaida, highlights his origin and helps to differentiate him from others with the same name. Philip is often associated with significant episodes in the biblical narrative. In one such episode, Jesus asks Philip to address the issue of feeding the multitude, challenging his faith. Philip's response reveals the human perspective in the face of an apparently insurmountable challenge. He evaluates the situation considering the available material resources and responds to Jesus that 200 denarii worth of bread would not be enough for everyone to get a piece. Despite human logic, Jesus takes the bread, gives thanks to God, and distributes it to the crowd miraculously, 
The bread and fish multiply, feeding not only 5,000 men, but also women and children, with 12 baskets of leftovers collected. Even after the death of Jesus, Philip continues to play a crucial role in spreading the gospel. His missionary journey takes him to various regions, including Samaria, where he performs miracles and baptizes many in the name of Jesus. The New Testament does not provide substantial information about the death of the Apostle Philip. Information about his death is mainly based on church traditions, and there is no clear consensus on the details. Accounts tell that Philip died crucified and stoned in Hierapolis, in Asia Minor, around 80 AD, during the persecution of Christians by the Roman Emperor Domitian. Simon, known as Simon the Zealot, is one of the apostles whose story in the Bible is marked by a unique identity and a fervent commitment to his principles. Little is known about Simon's life prior to his calling by Jesus. His designation Zealot suggests a possible association with the political religious group of Zealots, known for their fervent devotion to the independence of Israel. This affiliation implies a fervent nationalist zeal before his encounter with Jesus. Details about the death of Simon the Zealot are scarce in the scriptures. Most accounts state that Simon was brutally tortured. His body was flayed and sawn in half during the persecution of Christians by the Roman Emperor Trajan. Bartolomeu, one of the twelve apostles chosen by Jesus to follow him, is known to have played a significant role in spreading Christianity, though the texts do not continue his narrative in detail. The traditions regarding his death vary, but many indicate he was martyred for his faith. The history and legacy of the apostles, with their journeys of faith, sacrifice and dedication, continue to inspire Christians around the world, serving as testimonies to the strength and transformation that come with faith in Jesus Christ. Bartholomew's initial encounter with Jesus is described in the Gospel of John, where Philip introduces him to Jesus, who greets him as a man without deceit. After Jesus' death, Apostle Bartholomew traveled to India to preach the gospel. He succeeded in converting many to Christianity, drawing the ire of King Astyages, a pagan. Enraged by Bartholomew's preaching, the king ordered his arrest and execution. Historical information on Bartholomew's death is limited, and Christian tradition offers various narratives. One recounts Bartholomew facing martyrdom by beheading, on the other hand, Orthodox Christian tradition holds a peculiar narrative about Bartholomew's death, stating that in the year 51, he was flayed alive before being crucified upside down for his refusal to renounce his faith in Christ. His skin was displayed publicly as a warning to other Christians. Matthew, the apostle and evangelist, was known as Levi, a tax collector in Capernaum before his call by Jesus. His profession often placed him in a position despised by society, but his life changed dramatically when Jesus called him to follow. His most enduring contribution was the written record of his testimony in the form of a gospel, which became a fundamental part of the New Testament. According to ancient Christian traditions, Matthew continued to preach the gospel after Jesus' ascension. Accounts suggest he preached in various regions, including Ethiopia and present-day Iran. Regarding his death, there are various narratives. However, the most widespread tradition states that Matthew was martyred in the city of Nadab, located in Ethiopia, having been slain by the sword. His life is a testimony to his faith in Jesus Christ and his gospel remains a vital source of wisdom and guidance. Thomas, also known as Didymus or Thomas the Twin, is one of the twelve apostles chosen by Jesus. Originally a fisherman in Galilee, Thomas is prominent in the gospels for his sincerity and at times his reluctance to believe in extraordinary events. 
His identification as Didymus suggests he might have been a twin, though the identity of his supposed twin is not specifically mentioned in the scriptures. After Jesus' death, Thomas expressed doubts about the resurrection and declared he would only believe upon touching Jesus' wounds. This skepticism earned him the moniker Doubting Thomas. Thomas's subsequent encounter with Jesus, where he is invited to touch the wounds, culminates in his confession of faith, proclaiming, My Lord and my God. This transformation highlights not just Jesus' mercy, but also the importance of overcoming doubts to find deep faith. Information on Thomas's later life is scarce. Christian traditions suggest he engaged in missions to India, spreading the gospel's message. According to this narrative, Thomas was martyred by spears in Chennai, India, after a successful evangelization mission. Finally, Judas Iscariot, a name that echoes through the centuries as synonymous with betrayal. A prominent figure in the Gospels, as the apostle who handed Jesus over to the religious authorities, Judas hailed from the city of Kerioth, which gave him the surname Iscariot. Little is known about his life beyond his act of betrayal, which became one of the most infamous and discussed moments in Christian history. Before becoming a disciple of Jesus, Judas Iscariot, like the other apostles, shared the call and purpose common to followers of Christ. The tragic moment that marked Judas's history occurred during the Last Supper, as recorded in the Gospels, when Satan entered him, prompting him to betray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. He identified Jesus to the religious leaders with a kiss, signaling who should be arrested. The motive behind Judas's betrayal is a complex issue and the subject of speculation. Some theories point to possible disillusionment or unmet expectations regarding the earthly kingdom they hoped for. Others suggest financial motives or evil influences. After the betrayal, Judas's life spiraled into tragedy. Realizing the consequences of his act, he attempted to return the 30 silver coins to the religious leaders, but unable to cope with the guilt and remorse, he hanged himself. Christian tradition often highlights Judas's tragic fate as a reminder of the severity of betrayal, but also reflects on the tension between human free will and the divine plan. His death by hanging occurred in a field known as the Field of Blood, or Potter's Field, purchased with the 30 silver coins Judas returned. Located near the Valley of Hinnom in Jerusalem, this field was originally intended for the burial of foreigners and criminals. The religious leaders bought this land specifically for burying foreigners who died in the city, hence the name Field of Blood, evoking the blood of Jesus shed as part of Judas's betrayal. Besides its symbolism linked to betrayal, the field also became an icon of repentance and redemption. The death of Judas Iscariot is reported in the New Testament, specifically in the Gospel of Matthew and the Acts of the Apostles, with the narratives differing slightly in detail, but converging on the same tragic outcome. According to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27, verses 3 to 5, after betraying Jesus, Judas repented and tried to return the 30 silver coins to the religious leaders. However, they rejected the money, and consumed by remorse, Judas threw the coins into the temple, went out and hanged himself. The account in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verses 18 and 19, provides a slightly different version, describing how Judas, after repenting, fell and had his body burst open, spilling his guts. In the face of the incredible and often shocking stories of Jesus' twelve apostles, we have reached the end of this epic journey. But what we've just explored is merely the tip of the iceberg. These men, who left everything behind to follow a higher calling, not only shaped the course of history with their faith and sacrifice, but also left us lessons of courage, loyalty, and unconditional love. Each apostle, with their own unique story of faith, doubt, 
triumph, and in many cases, martyrdom, challenges us to look beyond our own lives and consider what it truly means to believe in something greater than ourselves. But wait, there's so much more. This video was just an introduction to the vast and complex world of Jesus' earliest followers. There are countless other stories, unsolved mysteries, and profound teachings still waiting to be explored. And this is where you come in. By following, liking, commenting on, and sharing our videos, you're not just joining a community of curious minds and hearts passionate about truth, but you're also helping us uncover even more secrets of Christian history. Imagine discovering together the hidden lessons in Jesus' parables, the untold mysteries of the early church, and the miracles that defy explanation. Each video we create is an open door to a new adventure where faith and fact meet, where the past speaks directly to the present, and where each discovery brings us a bit closer to the divine. So what are you waiting for? Subscribe now, turn on notifications, and be part of this unforgettable journey. Comment below which apostle intrigued you the most and why. Your participation is the flame that keeps this quest alive. Together we can illuminate the darkest corners of history, find inspiration in stories of unwavering faith, and perhaps discover new ways to live our own lives with greater purpose and love. Don't miss the chance to be part of something bigger. Join us in the next exploration and let the stories of the apostles inspire you to seek, question, and above all, believe. Your journey of discovery has just begun and we promise that each video will be a new adventure. Like, share, comment, and most importantly, keep the flame of curiosity burning. The world of the apostles is full of mysteries waiting to be unveiled. Are you ready for the next revelation?